Okay, the next problem we'll look at is this one. Let's read through the information first and make a list of the information that's been provided with this related rights problem. Conveyor belt drops sand into a conical pile. Now, as you read through these, you should be thinking about what kind of formula it is they want us to work with. That means that uh, since it's conical, I have some geometry formula that's going to involve a cone. I don't know for sure at this point what kind I need, but probably going to have to involve something maybe with an area or a volume. So let's keep reading. Whose radius is always twice the height. That seems like it's pretty important, so I'm going to go ahead and write that down algebraically. Radius is, so R equals twice the height, so 2H. So I don't know where I'll use that. I'll come back to it later, but I want to at least just write it down to start with. Sand falls at a rate of 5 cubic meters per second. What is that? That is dv dt. And the rate that the volume is changing with respect to time, that's given as 5. How fast is the height increasing? Okay, what is that? That's dh dt. And it looks like they're asking us to solve for that one. So how fast is the height increasing when the radius is 20 meters? Let's check our units real quick. Meters and meters, we're okay there. So that means the radius is equal to 20. Okay, so this is the information that's been provided. So now let's think about what formula we want to use. Notice that this right here is a volume. They gave us a volume with respect to time. Again, we knew it was a volume because cubic meters is a unit that's usually, that they usually use for uh, volume. That means I need to find a volume of a cone. Now you can look that up. It's going to be uh, in the book, one-third pi r squared h. Again, this kind of formula I would give you on a test. Uh, so you have it, but this is the one that you want to use. Okay, so are we ready to do the derivative implicitly? Yeah, we could do that right now, but the problem is we have two different variables. So when I do that with the product rule, I'm going to end up having a DRDT and a DHDT. Well, DHDT is what we're trying to solve for, and there was no information here provided in terms of the radius DRDT. So let's think about if there's an easier way to do this. Remember back over here, they gave us this information that we thought was important, radius equals two times the height. What we're gonna use here is uh, this information to replace the R because I wanna get this down to one variable. I'm not gonna, I don't need to worry about using anything with R. There's no dr, dt they're asking for. So I want to eliminate that to make the problem easier. I'm going to put this information, the 2h, I'm going to substitute it into the R. So I get 1 third pi and then a 2h is going to go in there instead of the R. By doing that, I can eliminate one of my variables. Let's go ahead and simplify. 1 third pi times 4h squared times h. So over here I have a 4 thirds pi, and then I have h cubed. So this makes the problem a whole lot easier. Now we don't need to worry about using product rule. We don't have to worry about having extra variables that we don't have information provided for. So that's always a good technique. If you have two variables, a lot of times the problem is going to give you some extra information that you can use to eliminate one of the variables to get it down to here. Now that we're at that point, we're ready to take the derivative of both sides with respect to time. dv dt we'll get on this side. 4 thirds pi, I'll leave that, and then I'm going to do the derivative of h cubed. That's going to involve the chain rule. 3 comes down, h squared, and then don't forget the derivative of the inside. I get dh dt. I can do a little cleanup on this. The 3's are going to cancel, and now I'm ready to plug in information that's been provided here. First, we'll start with dv dt. That was given as 5. So I have 5 equals, and I have 4 pi, okay, the h. Okay, now the h was not given. However, since we know that radius equals 2 times the height, and we're given the radius is 20, I can just put 20 in over here. 20 equals 2h, divide, and I'll get 10. So actually, my height's equal to 10 based on what I came up with over there, and I can just put that in for this one, so I have 10 squared. And then the HDT, that's what we're trying to solve for. So this time we're solving for that particular variable. Let's simplify this. I'm going to get 400 pi 
and then times dh dt. The last thing you're going to do is divide both sides by 400 pi, and when you do that, I'll just put the answer right here, dh dt is going to be equal to 5 over 400 pi. That reduces to 1 over 80 pi. The pi has to stay on the bottom because you're dividing both sides by that. And so you get 1 over 80 pi. Now what's, what kind of units are we going to have on this one? Okay, well, the dimensions, the radius is in terms of meters. That means your height's going to be in terms of meters as well. The time is going to be the same unit of time that we had before seconds. So the units that we'll have on this are going to be in terms of meters per second. So the answer is 1 over 80 pi meters per second.